What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 187 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about one more Doctor Who book. Doctor Who, The Eye of Ashea. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, this collects issues 5 through 8 of the ongoing Doctor Who series that started in the book that I talked about yesterday, The Hypothetical Gentleman. And uh, this is by Andy Diggle, Josh Adams, Joshua Hale Filikov, uh, Horatio Dominguez, and Richard Dinnick. And uh, I uh, bet you guys are wondering, uh, what is this guy doing still talking about Doctor Who? He has talked about how much he doesn't like the TV show. He didn't like the last two books that he talked about. Well, I got this book along with the other two all at once. Uh, and it turns out I actually like this one quite a bit more than I like those other two. I feel like the characters here are uh, portrayed much better than they were in the previous volume. Uh, the Doctor is not portrayed as a self-involved, reckless man-child like he was uh, in that book. I felt like there uh, he was much more interested in going on adventures than he was to safety of his friends. Uh, here, he's not portrayed that way. Uh, he's not necessarily portrayed as being overly interested in their welfare, but he's not actively trying to get them into dangerous situations like he was in the previous book. Uh, so that's a plus. Uh, Rory is not constantly whining on every single page. Uh, he does whine a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad as it was in The Hypothetical Gentleman, so that's also a plus. Uh, Amy, I still can't really get a read on her. Uh, she still kind of seems like she's just there. I don't really know what her personality is. Uh, this series, and really the other book that wasn't part of this series, hasn't really done a good job of letting me know who this character is on a character level. All I know is that she's portrayed by that actress who played Nebula in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Uh, I also like the stories quite a bit more here. I find these stories to be much more interesting. The first story here uh, has uh, the Doctor and his two friends on this uh, spaceship uh, that is powered by the core of a sun, and then uh, we get to see one of the Doctor's uh, former friends from, I guess, the late 70s, early 80s. At one point, the Doctor mentions UNIT, which was this uh, acronym uh, government organization from the uh, late 70s, early 80s that he was allied to at that time. And uh, he mentions that Unit was somehow connected to this cat burglar woman. And I'm assuming that she was a character who actually showed up in the show at one point. And uh, she is back and she is involved in this story. Uh, you're thinking that she is going to try and steal this giant diamond thing. And of course, everything is not what it seems. I really like that story quite a bit. Uh, it's a nice subversion on what you're expecting. Uh, I just like how that one turned out quite a bit. Uh, and then at the end of that story, Rory and Amy seemingly leave the doctor. And the doctor mentions it's not good for him to travel alone. I don't know why. I wish this book would have given a little bit of an explanation on why the Doctor always likes to have someone with him on his adventures. It could be something like uh, Batman and Robin, where when Batman doesn't have a Robin, he tends to go way too dark and he doesn't want to go that dark, so he always needs a young sidekick to kind of keep him from going that dark. Maybe it's something kind of like that. Uh, I don't know, but we're not told, and I wish we were. Uh, but after Rory and Amy leave and the Doctor says it's not good for him to travel alone, we then get a Doctor Solo story, where he goes and teams up with a cosmonaut from the 60s, uh, saves him from these evil shadows that eat human flesh. Uh, that's a pretty fun story. And then, uh, with no fanfare at all, Amy and Rory are back with the Doctor in a story where seemingly we get to see the return of his people, uh, some Time Lords who are not uh, renegade and rogue and going all over the place having adventures. And uh, this one is a little bit weird because when the Doctor first hears that there are uh, Galfreyans, I think is uh, the name of his species, when he first hears uh, that there's some Galfreyans involved in the story, he says, well, that's impossible. I'm the last one. And I'm thinking, time travelers, Doctor. Uh, if you're the last one, that doesn't mean that you're always going to be the last one. Or maybe it does mean that. I don't know. Uh, but he acts like it is absolutely impossible for there to be any Galfreyans alive. And then uh, he says, oh, okay, they're not Galfreyans. Okay, everything makes sense now. But I'm thinking, yeah, they could have been Galfreyans, though, because they could have just been traveling to a point after uh, their species was eradicated. I don't know. Uh, but then at the very end of that story, the bad guy is turned into a little kid and and then he's sent to Earth in the 1960s, and that page makes absolutely no sense to me. I get that it's trying to do this, like, oh, he gets his comeuppance thing, kind of like uh, how Stinky Pete at the end of Toy Story 2, uh, he gets his comeuppance, something kind of like that, except it doesn't make any sense. Uh, the boy, or he was an older man, and then he's turned into a boy, he's sent to Earth, and then this family finds him, and the woman's like, oh, he can't talk because he's speaking in an alien language, and then there's this person there who says, now we have 12, and I don't know 
if that's a reference to something in the Doctor Who mythos. I don't know if it's setting up something later on. Uh, bear in mind, this is now the second big subplot that's been introduced in this series that hasn't been dealt with. Uh, we still don't know what has become of the hypothetical gentleman or who that is. We know that the hypothetical gentleman is somehow messing with the TARDIS, and that's briefly touched on here, uh, but we don't get a full exploration of that subplot. So I am assuming that this series kept going for a good long while and that those subplots are going to be explored later. Or maybe this subplot with the guy who was turned into a boy and sent to the 60s on Earth, maybe that's not going to be explored. Maybe that's supposed to make sense and I just don't get it. Uh, I don't know what this Now We Have 12 thing even means. Uh, maybe it means something to people who are fans of Doctor Who, though. Uh, but if you are a fan of Doctor Who, I think that you will like this. And I say that with confidence because I am not a fan of Doctor Who and I like this quite a bit more than the other two Doctor Who books that I've talked about. Uh, so if you're not a fan of Doctor Who, then I'm pretty sure you will like this. And if you are a fan, I definitely think you'll like it. So uh, those are my thoughts on Doctor Who, The Eye of Ashea. I hope that you guys like this video. And if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.